What's up guys? So today I bring you my full gaming and emulation test of the brand new Xiaomi 12. With the aim of learning exactly how good this phone has been designed, what sort of cooling efficiency we will get, especially when going through some real life intensive tasks like gaming. So this smartphone is powered by the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and I have the 8 plus 256 gig variant in purple. Now on the front you have a 6.28 inch Full HD plus AMOLED display with 120 hertz adaptive refresh with the options to switch between 60 and 120 and you do have 419 pixels per inch with Gorilla Glass Victus on the front. So technically the power and performance should be there but how good does it really perform? Will it overheat? Will we see frame drops? Well we shall soon find out. So first of all, quick look at the benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench multi-core score of 3704, and you can see single core of 1240. In 922, we have achieved 963K. And inside PC Mark, we did test out the Work 3.0 performance test, and we achieved 12,986. And here is a bit more information for those who are interested. And while I was in PC Mark, I also ran the Storage 2.0 test and we achieved 27,360 and again more detailed information. We also ran the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Test, the shorter version, and the overall score 2555 with an average frame rate of 15.30. And I'll just scroll some of this data for you guys to check out performance, temperatures, and average frame rate. So interesting benchmark results. Now let's get on to the practical tests. But before we proceed, I just want to quickly confirm that this phone does not support display out via USB-C. So you can't connect this to an external display via the Type-C port, it's just not supported. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into some gaming, beginning with Genshin Impact. So before starting any gaming, check out the temperatures. So battery is 34 degrees and CPU is 37 degrees. Okay, so checking out the graphic settings of Genshin Impact. By default, it's set on medium with 30 FPS. I'm going to set it to the highest and change that to 60 FPS. Seems to play quite smooth. Quick frame rate check. You can see it fluctuating between 37 and 40 FPS. <laughs> Check out the FPS while we're battling. <laughs> FPS dropping down to 38. CPU temperature is actually on 58 degrees, which is quite high, and the battery temperature is at 39. So a little bit concerned about the CPU temperature reaching 58. It is going to drop down now, but that is otherwise quite a high temperature. All right, so quick look at the graphic settings for COD Mobile. You can see we have very high and max. It looks like we're playing at around 60 frames per second. All right, so that was a quick game of Call of Duty. Now let's check out the system temperatures. And CPU is on 48 degrees. It's going down to 46 degrees. Battery is on 39. All right, here are the graphic settings for PUBG Mobile. Um, you can see that Ultra HD is selectable 
and that will give us ultra frame rate or we can drop it down to HDR and get extreme frame rate. I'm going to stick with ultra HD and ultra, see how that plays and then we'll switch. All right, quickly check the frame rate. It's just over 40 frames per second playing on ultra. I've just switched the graphics settings to HDR and we're gonna test out a quick game with extreme. So quick look at the frame rate so you can see we are achieving around 60 frames per second when set to extreme frame rate and the game does play and look pretty good. All right so we have been playing PUBG Mobile for a while now. I want to check out the system temperatures. CPU temperature was at 52 degrees and as soon as I close the game you can see the temperature has started to fall and yes the phone does feel a bit warm to the touch but fortunately I am able to game so after playing three games the CPU temperature has come up to around 50 degrees yes it's slightly warm to the touch but so far it has not affected the gameplay so we are playing at extreme frame rate and if I quickly show you the frame rate again you can see it's giving us 60 frames per second, but it does fluctuate between 56 to 60 frames per second. But otherwise, yeah, real-time performance is pretty good. All right, so time to play some League of Legends. All right, quick look at the settings. So 60 FPS has been selected by default. Bottom turret is under attack. So quick look at the performance and you can see we are playing at a steady 60 frames per second on League of Legends. So yeah, plays really well. Um, and I have to also add that the sound quality is amazing. You've got stereo speakers, side firing, and they sound incredible. Kept our weapons wasted. Um, a very powerful and enjoyable sound. So great sound systems tuned by Harman Kardon, of course. All right, check it out, guys. Smackdown vs. Raw 2011 on the PS2 upscaled 4X resolution with Vulcan backend. And we are using the Esther SX2. And this game looks amazing upscaled to 4X resolution. Can't believe it's a 2011 game. All right, next up, we are playing International Superstar Soccer 3 on the Esther SX2 4X Vulcan. And again, you can see it plays great with no issues. He shoots. Yes, it's there. Michael Owen with the goal. The England star has struck. 15 minutes play. They've got ahead. The fanatical support. All right, straight after PlayStation emulation, I do want to quickly check the temperatures as we are. And the CPU temperature peaked at 58 degrees whilst playing PS2 games on this. So it looks like emulation is going to get your system heated. 
but we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going and see what this system can handle. All right, so next up we are playing Gran Turismo 10X Resolution PPSSPP Vulcan Backend, and the game looks incredible. I haven't played this game in such a long time, but it looks incredible upscaled to 10X. All right, so the next game we're playing is God of War Chains of Olympus. I find that the game plays best at 6x resolution, um, Vulcan backend. As this game is quite graphically demanding, if you take it above 6x resolution, you may experience some stuttering here and there. So um, 6x resolution seems to be the sweet point for this game. Um, again, plays really nice. Um, you can see that frame rate, pretty solid, steady 60 frames per second. All right, time to check out the temperatures. So battery temperature, 43. CPU temperature was above 59. So yeah, it's getting hot. No doubt about that. So let's keep playing. All right, now it's time for some Mario on 3DS Citra. 1X resolution is all this can handle. Anything higher and it's not gonna be playable. But even at 1X, the emulation is not perfect. A little bit jittery, both gameplay and audio. So this is what you can expect from Citra at the moment. So 1x resolution um, 3DS. So checking the temperatures again, it was at 62 as soon as I opened it. Uh, so temperatures exceeding 60 and yes, the phone does feel warm to the touch. All right, so we are playing Fighting Vipers 2 using Rycast. 5x resolution open gl with no issues classic dreamcast title uh, looks good at 5x so time for some wii emulation with dolphin emulator we are playing sonic colors 5x resolution vulcan and you can see the game plays very well and looks amazing Finishing off with some 007 from Russia with love on the GameCube. And I actually haven't played this game before. So yeah, it was actually quite good. Uh, still using Dolphin, 4X Vulcan. Plays great, as you can see. All right, we're going to quickly check out the final temperature after playing all the games that we just played. So it was just over 50 degrees, but you can see it's dropping down quite quickly. So there you have it guys, full gaming test completed. And as expected, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 did not disappoint. It managed to play all games and emulation pretty well, although the cooling is not as efficient as I would have liked. Reaching temperatures up to 62 degrees peak is quite hot. And if you continue playing like that, you would probably see the phone overheating message. Now, to be fair, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is a powerful chip and does run hot, especially if there is no adequate cooling in the phone. So it just means if you're looking to pick up this beast of a smartphone, the Xiaomi 12, do keep that in the back of your mind. You have to play conservatively and watch your temperatures. So not a phone for hardcore mobile gaming fans, even though it has the power and performance behind it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Are you considering the Xiaomi 12 for yourself? Meanwhile, my full review of this phone is coming very soon. That's all for this video. Please do like and sub to the channel for more cool, innovative tech videos. And a follow on Twitter and Instagram would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.